<clears throat> we are starting our lecture four of capacitors. It is related to exponential decrease or increase. It is optional from Cambridge perspective. You can skip this topic if you are solely interested in doing only Cambridge uh, CIE course of uh, A2 capacitors. However, if you want to understand capacitors beyond uh, CIE needs, then you can um, uh, watch this lecture. Okay. What is exponential increase? What is exponential decrease? That is our topic of today. Consider this expression y is equal to 2x. Its graph is like this. Y increases as X increases, but Y increases at a constant rate. Y increases at a constant rate. With respect to X. Okay. Now, if we say y is equal to x square, y increases, y increases rapidly with respect to x because y varies as a square of x. When x doubles, the value of y increases by 4. When x is 1, y is 1, according to this model. But when x is 2, y is 4 and when x is 3 y is 9 that means y increases as a square of x so its rate of increase is very in increases with the as x increases but consider this expression in which x is in power in this case x is the exponent the power x is exponent it is log, it is also called log, it is also called power. So this, when you draw this graph, if you try drawing this graph, you'll get a way, something like this. Something like this. What is the difference between uh, x square, x cube and 2x? For example, if you take the values of x over here and x square over here, or even x cube over here and then just add 2x over here and see what happens when x is 0 it is 0 it is 0 it is 1 2 raised to the power 0 is 1 okay when x is 1 it is 1 it is 1 it is 2 when x is 2 it is 4 it is 8 it is 4 okay when x is 3 it is 3 square 9 3, 27 and it is 2 raised to power 3 8 okay when x is 4 it is uh, 16 and it is 64 and it is 32 when x is 5 it is 25 it's 125 and it is 64 when x is 6 it is 36. You can see that it is it's it is lagging behind. X cube and 2x are increasing rapidly. But who is the final winner? Which increases more rapidly? Would like to see. You know, 6 cube, when you put 6 in at x place, 6 cube is 206. But 2 raised to power 6 is 128. Now it is going to increase very rapidly. Okay. When x is 7. We leave it because it, it is not increasing at a very rapid pace. 7 cube will give me what? 7 cube is roughly something 300 uh, something value. 49 multiplied by 7. It is uh, 40 plus 9 into 7. 280 plus uh, 63. It's 343. And it's 256. And when it is 8 over here, 8 cube is equal to what? 64 into 8. 
it is six uh, it it is somewhere in, uh, in in 400 range okay but this is now 512 okay and when it's nine it has some value but it goes to 1024 the point that i want to mention is that the rise of 2x is much faster than the rise of y is equal to x square and it's much faster than the rise of x cube okay so this is y is equal to 2x this is called exponential uh, rise this is called exponential rise now we move on to the point that in this world things either increase exponentially or either decrease exponentially they do not follow a constant increase or a constant decrease for example in this equation y is equal to mx plus c if c is positive and m is also positive this is positive and this is also positive then what happens the graph of this thing is like this i will say that y increases at a constant rate y increases at a constant rate when x increases so this is for constant increase and if m is negative if m is negative then the graph is something like this we say y decreases at a constant rate y decreases at a constant rate you so which things which increase or decrease at a constant rate are quite easy to deal with mathematically. Things which increase or decrease at a constant rate are quite easy to uh, de uh, deal mathematically. For example, in the case of Hooke's law, you know that when you apply force to extend this spring, it undergoes a change in length. That force and this change in length are related like this. We can say that force is directly proportional to extension or extension is directly proportional to the deforming force, this force. And force increases at a constant rate with respect to extension or extension increases at a constant rate with respect to force. Such kind of mathematic, uh, mathematical equations are very easy to deal with, but uh, majority of things in our practical life do not vary like this. They do not change like this. For example, if you have a hot cup of coffee placed on the table and its initial temperature is 100 degrees centigrade and the temperature of surrounding is 20 degrees centigrade. Since this temperature difference is large, the rate of heat flow to the surrounding is large. When the rate of heat flow to the surrounding is large, the rate of decrease of this temperature is also high, is high. So its temperature decreases rapidly. When its temperature becomes 80 degrees centigrade, the surrounding is still at 20 degrees centigrade because surrounding is very big. It can absorb a lot of heat and it doesn't show any rise of temperature. So now the temperature difference is less. The rate of heat flow will decrease. When the rate of heat flow will decrease, the rate of decrease of this temperature will also decrease. And when the temperature of this coffee is 60 degree, its temperature difference with the surrounding has decreased. When its temperature difference with the surrounding has decreased, its uh, rate of flow of heat to the surrounding it also decreases and rate of decrease of temperature also decreases. So if you plot a graph of temperature with respect to time, you will not see something like this. 
the temperature doesn't decrease to the temperature of surrounding at a constant rate rather it follows a curve like this it follows a curve like this this is called exponential decrease so exponential decrease is everywhere around us we have to deal with it mathematically for example when we discharge a capacitor through a resistor this is a resistor this is a capacitor this capacitor is initially charged to a certain voltage let's call that voltage as v not v0 that means initial voltage or voltage at t is equal to 0 now when i switch close the switch the electrons from this plate rush all the way to positive plate and when the few electrons leave this plate initially the electrons over here decrease and when the electrons over here decrease their repulsion with each other also decreases when their repulsion with each other decreases the number of electrons leaving in the next second in the next second also decrease as a result the graph of current with respect to time is a graph like this it becomes zero after a certain time we all know that its initial value is v not over r which i refer to this to as i not the area of this graph is equal to the charge stored in the capacitor and the voltage is also the voltage across the capacitor or across the resistor also decreases a volt current uh, the capacitor cannot supply current at a constant voltage it's like this and the charge on the capacitor also decreases to from its initial value q not it decreases to zero but its decrease does not follow this graph it's not a constant graph it follows exponential decrease it follows the exponential decrease now we will have to see what kind of equation that we can use to indicate an exponential decrease we know that for constant decrease we know that for constant decrease we use this equation y is equal to a minus bx but for exponential decrease our equation will change let's first of all consider this expression this value e x e is a number 2.718 x these dot dot dots indicate that this number is a very big number its decimal portion doesn't end but still we use it okay its decimal portion doesn't end and it decim its decimal portion doesn't have any um, any repetition so it's an irrational number we summarize it with ex <clears throat> as we can see that when x will increase when we put x1 over here x2 over here x3 over here x4 over here this number will get bigger and bigger and bigger so when we try plotting the graph of this we get something like this this is the graph of y is equal to ex okay now you can see that in minus 1 when x is minus 1 and x is minus 2 its value decreases for example when you put x equal to minus 1 it is something like this and its answer will be in decimal okay it might be <clears throat> 1 over 0.3 something or 0.4 something okay okay now y is equal to e raised to power 2 with this thing it will be even smaller so this is the graph of y is equal to ex now if we put if we replace x by minus x if we replace x by minus x 
this whole graph is reflected. The whole graph is reflected like this. We are interested only in its this portion because this decrease is an exponential decrease. We do not want this thing to, um, it, it's not in our part today. We will not discuss it. It's not in our present discussion. So we put a restriction of this. When we put a restriction of this on this graph, our graph is this graph only. It's left this, like this. So x, y, and y is equal to e raised per minus x. This is it. This is how it is. This thing. And it is an exponential graph. Now we stepwise bring changes to it. y is equal to e minus x. This is x. This is y. This is 0, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. It is like this. Y is equal to 0. It starts from 0, 1 and it decreases. And it's we can see that it decreases very, uh, very rapidly initially then its rate of decrease decreases. Its rate of decrease decreases, okay? Now, y is equal to, we plot 2e minus x, y is equal to 3e minus x, y is equal to 4e minus x, y is equal to 5e minus x, see? And y is equal to e minus x, 1e minus x. We plot them on the same grid. One, two, three, four, five. The graph of this thing, it is like this. The graph of this is like this. The graph of this is like this. The graph of this is like this. And the graph of this is like this. So we can say that whatever multiplied over here is the value of y when x is 0. Whatever appears over here is the value of y when x is 0. We can put a capital A over here, or we can call it also as y naught y naught means the value of y when x is 0 or the initial value of y or the starting value of y. Now we again we look at another point and that is y is equal to e minus x, y is equal to e minus 2x, y is equal to e minus 3x, y is equal to e minus 4x, y is equal to e minus 5x. What will happen when we increase a number over here in the power? We can see that number with x will do what? You know, its denominator will get bigger soon and it will follow and then this is its denominator will get bigger in the middle level at the at the central level and its denominator will grow slowly okay now if we plot them we try plotting them and we say that we start from 0 1 this graph will go like this okay and this graph will go like this it will decrease more rapidly why because its its denominator grows at a faster rate and then this graph will go like this it will it'll decrease even at a faster rate and then e4x it will be like this and then e5 minus 5x it will decrease even far to faster rate so when we say y is equal to e minus kx we should say that k controls 
A controls rate of decrease of Y. K controls rate of decrease. Now Y is equal to E minus KX. K is decay. It's, it's a constant of decay. Decay. The bigger the value of K is, faster is going to the graph. Uh, faster will be the rate at which the graph will uh, come down. And if we combine both facts, so this is the expression which is normally used to represent an exponential decrease. It begins from Y naught and it goes like this. Theoretically speaking, it doesn't touch the X axis, but uh, we consider after certain value of X that Y has decreased to a very low value, which is of no use to us. And then we consider we do not use this graph beyond that value of X. Okay. So this is the equation of exponential decrease. Now let's see how it helps us in capacitors and also in other different things. Okay. This is the value of y when x has a value of x. Value of instant instantaneous when this x is this, this is the y, which are connected by this expression. When x takes this value, this is the y. When x takes this value, this is y. When x takes this value, this is y. Okay. Now we move on to the exponential decrease of the capacitor. When this is a resistor, this is the switch S. It is initially charged to a voltage V naught and a charge Q naught. Okay. Initially, the current flows like this, and the initial current. initial current, which I will represent as I naught is equal to V naught over R, but then the current decreases. Current after time T will be represented by I. Current after some time is represented by I. Now, when we close the switch, This is the expression for current. Okay. Theoretically speaking, it should not touch uh, time axis because the mathematical model that we will want. But you know, it does become zero after a certain time. That time I have often told you is five RC seconds. Now the expression of this current, exp the expression of this uh, graph, according to this, should be something like this. I naught is equal to initial current E minus KT, where K is a constant. Bigger the value of K, faster will uh, be the rate, uh, current, faster is the rate at which the current goes to zero. Faster is the rate at which current goes to zero. Now, if you see, if this capacitor is a big one, it is a big capacitor with high value of capacitance, and if the resistance is also big, these two factors try to, you know, make current go slow, or go down slow. When the value of C and R is big, the, the current decreases to zero at a slower rate. The current doesn't become zero very quickly. For example, if you have a big swimming pool, if the swimming pool is a very big, which has a, got a big capacitance, and the pipe from which the water is going out, water is um, coming out of the swimming pool and the objective is that swimming pool should get empty, then the uh, thinness of the pipe is related to R. If pipe is very thin and its diameter is very small, 
we will say that the R resistance of the pipe is high. So if swimming pool is big and resistance of the pipe is high, both factors will make it longer for the swimming pool to become empty. As a result, so the product of RC is making uh, the discharge of capacitor longer. So this K is actually one over RC. And the, this expression uh, becomes more mathematical. It, it is like this, V naught over R, E minus one over RCT. So this is the graph of current with respect to time for a capacitor. And the area of this graph is always equal to the total charge stored in the capacitor. Similarly, the voltage after some time is V, small v. And the graph of that voltage with respect to time, it is this graph. Now, when we make a mathematical equation of this, it is V at any time is equal to V naught E minus one over RCT. And after five RC, we consider the discharge over. Why five RC? Five RC is like this, that when we put five RC over here, CC gets, RC gets canceled with RC and it's V is equal to E minus five and V naught over E raised to power five. And when E raised to power five, when you evaluate it, it is something 0 0.01 V naught or it's even smaller 0 0.005 V naught, which is very small and we can safely ignore it. And similarly, you can write an expression for the charge that charge at any time is equal to initial charge E minus one over RCT. This is how the, we make the equations of the capacitor, discharge, which, which are used in the discharge of capacitor. Now we come to the charging of capacitor. For this, we need to model a situation like this, in which something increases and becomes constant and then doesn't increase. For this, what should we do? We will again take the help of E raised to power X. You know, a E raised to power X is this graph. When we replace X by minus X, you get something like this. And when you put a restriction of x bigger than equal to zero, you are only left with this portion. And then y is equal to minus ex, it is reflected in x axis and it is like this. It is like this. And it, it is cutting this point at zero minus one, okay? When we, now y is equal to minus E minus X. The graph of this we just discovered is like this, starting from zero. And with the fact that we have imposed a restriction X bigger than zero, it's like this. Now, if we put A over here, It, this graph will, its y-intercept will change. It will start cutting at zero minus a. And when we add a to it, it becomes like this. And when it becomes like this, it is something like this. y is equal to a minus x. And then adding a K over here can help you get a graph like this or a graph like this, which controls the rate of rise of it, uh, this uh, graph. So how we use it, let me explain it now.
if this is a battery and we have a resistance R over here and this is a capacitor this is called NRC circuit this is called NRC circuit okay this is negative terminal this is positive terminal okay this is called RC circuit and uh, or you can draw it like this as well when we switch close the switch the electrons from the negative terminal rush to the this plate and get accumulated over here and when the and they start repelling the electrons which are coming in the next second so the number of electrons moving in this wire in the first second is higher the number of electrons moving from this terminal to the negative plate in the next second will decrease because of their repulsion however few still few electrons will make their place to this plate and when third when the in the third second the rate of flow of electron will decrease even further making it diff and eventually the flow of electron will become zero same goes for for this uh, side this battery is able to snatch a lot of electrons from this neutral plate and when electrons are snatched this plate becomes positively charged it start repelling opposing the snatching of electrons by this positive terminal of the battery so it will allow less electrons to move in this direction in the next second all it will still become a little more positive and in the third second even electrons moving from this plate to this will decrease even further eventually this plate will become positive to a level where it will stop any flow of electron in this direction so the current time graph of a capacitor being charged is very similar to the case when the capacitor was being discharged and we will write that it is, is its expression is exactly the same however the voltage across the capacitor increases and it becomes equal to the battery voltage the voltage across the capacitor increases and it becomes equal to the battery voltage the voltage across the capacitor increases and becomes equal to the battery voltage for this we will write an expression that the voltage of the capacitor is equal to e naught 1 minus 1 over rct so these are the equations which are used for the capacitor but these are the equations when a dc battery is connected in series with capacitor and a resistance so these this is a simple dc rc circuit and uh, which contains resistance and capacitance and a, a, a dc source in it okay and um, you know in in these cases the voltage becomes maximum of zero after five rc seconds the current always becomes zero after five rc seconds and this duration of closing the switch and five rc seconds is called transient state this is a transient state in which the electron uh, 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 capacitor either becomes charged or becomes discharged one thing that i would like to add that energy uh, the battery provides an energy of q v whereas this capacitor stores q v by 2 and q v by 2 is the energy wasted in the resistor this is the story of capacitors but this expression y is equal to y naught e minus kx doesn't end over here it, its application in a2 physics goes on let us discover for example in the later chapters of telecommunication we will study this is a fiber optics and a signal or light signal having power p naught is introduced over here and as this signal travels its power decreases and it loses its power so after traveling a distance of x the power of the signal is something like this following an exponential decrease so we develop an expression that power p 
after traveling distance x is related to initial power given to the fiber optics minus mu x where mu is a constant if the quality of fiber optics is very high then you know that the power doesn't lose much so the value of mu will be less and if the quality of fiber optics is very poor then the power will go to zero very quickly then at that time this mu value will be high so i should call it an attenuation constant what is attenuation attenuation is gradual loss of power as the signal travels as the message travels since the light signal is the message that we want to communicate from this end to this end so this is signal uh, power okay attenuation constant or we can also call it absorption powers absorption constant This equation is still helpful for us. For example, when we will study X-rays in medical physics, let us suppose that this is a human organ, human body. It can be the um, portion of a skin enlarged and the thickness of skin shown magnified or a layer of fat or a layer of muscle. So X-rays when move inside the human body, their entering intensity is called I naught. And after traveling a distance x, their intensity is called i. Clearly, when X-rays move in the human body, after traveling x millimeters or x centimeters in an organ, their intensity decreases like this. And when their decrease intensity decreases like this, using this famous equation, we write intensity is equal to initial intensity e minus mu x where x is the distance in millimeters or in centimeters that they travel in the human body and i naught is the initial x-ray intensity when it hit the human uh, surface of an organ and started penetrating it okay now mu is the again absorption or attenuation constant Okay. Now the X-ray, the behavior of X-ray inside anything in a human body is like this. If X-ray is traveling from the fat, it might go like this because fat is a soft uh, organ or soft tissue, soft tissue. But when it is traveling in a muscle, its intensity decreases more rapidly. And when it is traveling in a bone, its intensity becomes zero quickly or very less quickly. So the value of mu for the bone is very high and the value of mu for the muscle is less and for the fat, for a layer of fat, it's even less. And if we are measuring X in millimeters, then it will be measured in millimeter minus one. Why in the case of Y is equal to E minus KX, if X has certain units, K always have one over those units because the units should cancel. And according to our your knowledge of homogeneity, this whole fraction should not have any units. These units should cancel, the units of the power should cancel with each other because the unit of this is equal to the unit of this. And this thing has no units. Now we apply this equation even on ultrasound. When an ultrasound wave enters any um, organ, its intensity also decreases like this. And we apply the same equation on ultrasound as well. Do you think that the role of this equation has finished? No. It's still going to the radioactivity. We know from our knowledge that as the radioactive at a sample of a material disintegrates, we know that its count rate decreases with respect to time. The radiations that it emits, they keep on decreasing. So the count rate, the radiations recorded by the GM tube are counts per minute or counts per second. They form a pattern like this. We know from our own O-level knowledge. What we do is that we pass a smooth line 
to average out these fluctuations and for this line using this expression we will say count rate at any time t is equal to initial count rate and e minus lambda t where t is the time which you can measure in seconds you can also measure in minutes and you can also measure it in hours and you can also measure it in days if you measure it in seconds then the value of lambda is second minus uh, the unit of lambda is second raised to power minus 1 if, if for example lambda t now if its units are second its units are second minus 1 if it is measured in meter it is minute it is measured in meter minute minus 1 if it time is measured in years it is measured in year minus 1 okay now count rate is the uh, you know this is a radioactive sample and it is emitting radiations in all directions okay and you have placed gm tube over here gm tube can only record those radiations which are falling on the window of uh, gm tube and the radiations recorded by the gm tube are called counts per minute are called counts per minute whereas the total number of radiations emitted by this radioactive sample are called activity and a is the activity at any time t and a naught is the initial activity even these two bear the same relationship that y naught e minus kx because of all the radi radi radioactive samples which emit radiations their activity decreases with the passage of time and it is due to this reason that when this planet earth was formed initially it contained a lot of radioactivity there were a lot of radioactive rocks unstable isotopes and the earlier planet earth although it was hot when it cooled down still it was emitting the rocks of the earth's surface were emitting too much alpha beta and gamma radiations and as a result the activity was very high and the biological life couldn't begin because of this tremendous high activity and then after sometime this activity decreased and became very low so then the biological life could start on this planet earth and we can apply this equation on few other things as well for example when the radioactive isotope starts decreasing the number of undecayed atoms also decrease and we can apply this expression on those number of undecayed atoms as well the number of undecayed atoms those who haven't decayed decrease with the passage of time because more, as more and more atoms decay and emit alpha beta radiations those who haven't emitted alpha beta gamma radiations their number decreases and the number of undecayed atom decreases as the process of emission of radiation goes on and same is the case with mass of a active radioactive isotope you can apply this equation if mass after some time m not initial mass and uh, its mass also decreases activity decreases and anything associated with this also decreases so this expression is used extensively for uh, our analysis there is another application of this equation which we do not we will not consider in our a2 physics and that is that the temperature of hot body decreases with the following this equation this is called newton's law of cooling the temperature decrease follow the decrease of temperature follows an exponential decrease this is temperature above surrounding and if you measure with respect to surrounding then it the graph can become like this that the body will cool down till room temperature under that circumstances the expression will become something like this over here we'll again have to put a constant because it becomes constant at a point c this quick express this knowledge is very difficult this uh, uh, in, this lecture was filled with too much mathematics and a mathematics involving the logs and the graphs of logs and exponents exponential graphs so any anybody who has done lot of mathematics of logs can understand this thing if you have followed this lecture and if you have understood it perfectly well i can promise you an a, a star because this knowledge is 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 retained and understood by very few 
is, is understood and retained by very few students. And of course, those who will master this level of uh, knowledge, they will have an edge over the students who haven't understood it to this in, in this way. So uh, if you have understood it, it's wonderful. Congratulations, because it, this will help you to perform very well in final A2 uh, ACI course, as well as in SAT, as well as in FSC entrance exam and any other entrance exam that you pursue uh, at uh, pre and before entering the university or even in the first year of the university. Thanks for watching.